This is Twit. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and I am the host of Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. I know you got yourself a fancy smartphone, you got yourself a fancy camera, but your pictures are still lacking. Can't quite figure out what the heck shutter speed means? Watch my show. I got you covered. Want to know more about just the ISO and exposure triangle in general? Yeah, I got you covered. Or if you got all of that down, you want to get into lighting, you know, making things look better by changing the lights around you. I got you covered on that, too. So check us out each and every Thursday here on the network. Go to twit.tv slash hop and subscribe today. Uh, well, you know what goes with Thanksgiving turkey? I don't know. This is <laughs> I just, I don't know. Is, is that bundles? Sure. So, sure. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, sure. That's what I, don't I know. think of. Just, just, yeah, just bundle a, bundle some apps with your turkey. Well, so really, uh, so our, our Google Android uh, Google and Android TVs are certainly smart televisions, but what they don't have a lot of is memory. So Google notes uh, in that in the year of our smartphone, 2022, most smartphones have around six, 64 gigabytes of storage, but your TV might only have eight gigabytes of storage, which is kind of obviously an issue as we kind of expect our smart televisions to do more. You know, most like a lot of people are starting to have them and we have like a bajillion different streaming services and thus a bajillion different apps that we got to have on our TVs. But the storage is becoming an issue. And so very recently, Google has announced that in order to serve this, you know, widening ecosystem of TV apps, that they are now going to require developers and publishers wanting to create apps for the Google slash Android TV platforms, that these developers slash publishers will have to use Android app bundles with archiving in order to publish apps. So we've talked about Android app bundling in the past. It's basically a rather, a relatively new publishing format that was announced around 2018, but really didn't really come into play until 2020. And so basically in the before times, not, in the, well, I guess actually in the before times too, but before before app bundles, you know, we uh, as developers, we would just push up what is known as an Android package, which is your app. And it has every single thing that we might need for every single type of device, screen size, screen density, language, whatever, all rolled up into one binary. And you got that, which has a lot of extra stuff in it. So what app bundles have done is to kind of provide Google a way to let developers load all that stuff into Google Play, and then what happens is the Play Store will actually generate an APK that is kind of geared towards whatever device is downloading it. So rather than getting you know, all kinds of extra stuff that you personally as a user on your particular device don't need, you get a kind of customized APK. So where this comes into play is that, you know, we talked about archiving before, and Michelle wrote a very nice breakdown about how, you know, the actual archiving works which, you know, helps to nominally save up to 60% of storage when you are, you know, having an app that you don't want to use. Uh, like right now, you want to kind of hibernate it. Uh, mm -hmm. You can archive it and it, you know, drops down 60% storage. Um, and just in general, using app bundles with this kind of like, um, I don't know, couture. <laughs> that wasn't the word I wanted, <laughs> but this like couture, it's not the right, the right, this uh, bespoke. I, be, I was going to say, it makes bespoke. it sound Don't way cooler bespoke. than it actually way is. Way cooler than it is. <laughs> this like bespoke, I should tell that to my, I should write a talk about app bundles and just use couture. But you know, these kind of like uh, more uh, customized APKs can save up to 15%. So um, it's really interesting because uh, app bundles are not exactly like mandatory. Like most new apps have to use app bundles. Most developers like the places I've worked have adopted them voluntarily because Making smaller APKs is great, um, but yeah, they are required for archiving because it needs all that kind of special uh, kind of compression magic that, again, you should read Michelle's article about, uh, and which also is now required for TV. So uh, archiving isn't required for most phone apps, but they will be required for TV apps. So um, if you have a Google TV, Android TV, and you know you were kind of wondering how much space you storage space you got in your TV, it's not much. It's really not much. No, it's but not. It's really not eight. I said memory, but I meant storage. Eight gigabytes of storage. Um, so yeah, uh, this makes a lot of sense. Um, and, and, and to be honest with you, the impact on developers should be not a lot. Like I, I it's never trivial. But I think we, when we switched to app bundles, it took uh, whoever was doing it. Actually, it might have been a friend of the show, Vishnu, who's a very good friend of mine. Like a few days. Um, Google like estimates that it should take the average developer like three days to do it. So. The deadline for this is actually May 2023. So it kind of fast, relatively speaking, for Google to demand developers do something. But, um, you know, as they're they're definitely shifting towards emphasizing, you know, Google or Google TVs and Android TVs as a form factor, there's going to be a thing. 
So weren't we weren't we just talking about the lack of storage space on Google TV recently? Yeah, I feel like it's yeah, come yeah. up a number of times. It really seems yeah. endemic to that particular and, thing. Like in phones, well, it's never I, an I've issue, in, but on Google TV, in, it always is. It seems like. I've run into it with Actually, my Chromecast, Chromecast with Google TV, 4K, yeah, whatever Chromecast, you call it, yeah. where like I literally have to delete apps yeah. because I run out of room, which is Super like annoying, cool. Yeah. So I can't watch PBS. Oh well, you know, like and then you've got to do this un. Install, reinstall, kind of uh, tango whenever you want to watch yeah. something on, you know, yes. um, it, it hit a wall with it. It's not cool. Yeah. What were yeah. you going to say, Michelle? Yeah. yeah, I was about to bring up that, the, you know, the Google didn't bring up the, one of the biggest offenders is their own device, the Chromecast yes. with Google TV 4K, which is an eight gigabyte internal storage. And I'm sure you've, we've talked about it before on the show. Plenty of people have had storage related problems because they just don't have enough storage on their yeah. device just from installing the applications. You know, and it, when I think about it right now, I'm like, okay, so obviously they're doing that. And I say they, Google, other manufacturers do this too with their Google TV and their Android TV devices. I'm guessing they're doing that because it saves costs to have only eight gigs of, of storage in there. But storage isn't so expensive that the bump to 16 gigs, like, I mean, like I can't imagine it's that much more. Like how much does that tack onto the product versus the pain that the consumer <laughs> goes through when you reach that that limit? I mean, eight gigs just sounds cr like incredibly under uh, you know, under the number that it needs to be. I, I don't yeah. know how you release a device like that and release it with eight gigs and be okay with it. This certainly helps, but I don't think mm -hmm. this suddenly makes those those very you know low storage uh, devices suddenly you know magically be able to have twice as many apps on there. I mean, it'll improve it. It'll make things a little bit roomier, but not to the degree that as a consumer we can just be like, okay, cool. We never have to worry about that in the way that we never really have to worry about that with our phones. It's just not a thing we worry about much anymore. Yeah, and even yeah. even though like even if archive like app archiving, which again allows you to kind of hibernate apps, that's yeah. still on the user to do that. That's still up to you to kind of prune through and be like, well, okay, I'm not like football season's over, so I don't need like ESPN app or whatever. Right. It's up to you yeah, to do it. App. It would be just yeah. simpler to stick another a few more. Again, I said sorry, I said memory store a bit more storage in there, and I I, I think you're, it's a really good point. And again, maybe we're not seeing something on the manufacturing side. Is there like I don't know, like a latency between yeah. what we all consider like average storage and maybe what like TV manufacturers are able to put in TVs. But I can't imagine like from eight to 16, like there, like there's, there's some jumps in there that would actually, yeah, improve quality of life, but that I, I don't personally see would be a cost or size increase. But again, not a TV manufacturer personally, but yeah. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I, I'm guessing it's, I can understand why they're, why like the very budget low end TVs might not have, mm -hmm. you know, more storage. But like when you're buying a three thousand dollar, two thousand dollar TV, I don't really understand why yeah. those have like such minuscule storage capacities or like such low end CPUs. I I'm I, I don't really know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or even if you're buying Google's, you know, Google's solution. Google, I, I maybe unfairly, but I you know I tend to kind of put Google a little bit more on a. Uh, at, at, on a level of expectation that's maybe above some of the other manufacturers out there just because I think of Google as being the company that's like this is how it could be this is what you this is what we want to be the best representation of all the hard work we're doing on the software the behind ideal. the scenes the ideal yeah. and then to then kind of cheap out on these things and then as a consumer run into those things and realize just kind of the pain and discomfort that comes with that uh, on a device like that is just kind of like eh, I expected better I hoped for better talk can and can I deviate just away from the storage, but on the topic of Google TV and and Jason kind of uh, drifting off of your expecting better. So I've had the Chromecast with Google TV since it came out, right? Like the little mm -hmm. the little white puck. Um, Google knows so much about me. Like we were talking about the Discover tab, right? And and Google News and like how to tell it, like what stories you're interested in, and all the stuff like that. I am fascinated by how little it seems like Google knows about me when interacting with Google TV. Mm. <laughs> Right. Like, like, you know, like Google should know I have no interest in football. Don't serve up the Monday night football banner thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Google should know that I don't watch, you know, I don't watch reality television. Don't give me whatever nonsense Love Island thing is whatever. Like, show me <laughs> sci-fi. Show Like, yeah. you know what I like? A, you know what I search for. You know what I've rented from you. You know what I watch on the platform. 
right? Like, so, so why can't I get actual like valuable recommendations instead of the garbage that it puts up on a daily basis in terms of like in that main rotator. And then even on like when it tries to bubble up recommended stuff, yeah. it like never hits the mark. Yeah. I was thinking, I, wonder, I was just thinking about very that generic. the other day. Yeah, and I was like, this very is so like most people will like this. That's right. why we put it there. But I and, and admittedly, and no admittedly I understand that I understand that a, a portion of them have, um, like it's like ad based, you know, like, sure. some of the, and that's fine. That's like, I see it says sponsored. I know that's not the thing, but the ones that don't say that that's organic and that should be using what you know about me. And it doesn't, I don't know. Just, it's just, I, I find it very bizarre. It seems like, again, it's like a Google pro product that we think that this could, should be the ideal. This is how watching TV can be. This is how great it could be. And it's not even doing what the other apps in the Google sphere can do. Yeah. Yeah. So, Michelle, you got you got a little more to tack on to this before we move on? Yeah, there's an interesting line in Google's blog post announcing this feature or this uh, deadline. Um, they say that a quick archive slash unarchive user interface is built into the TV. And that kind of got me thinking about how the rollout of this feature is going to differ than it's going to roll out on smartphones. So on Android TV slash Google TV, the, the launcher is actually provided by Google. All Android TV slash Google TV devices have the same launcher that's yeah, available right. by Google through the Play Store. Right. So what that means is that likely we'll see Google roll out an update, adding maybe like you know like a long press on the D-pad on your TV remote. You'll be able to archive or unarchive an app from the home screen. They can't do that on smartphones because smartphones are very fragmented. And so your Pixel phone has the Pixel launcher, but your Samsung phone has a One UI launcher. So Google can't push an update to every Android smartphone or tablet that adds a similar built-in archiving slash unarchiving feature. And instead, what we're seeing them doing is likely they're just going to be adding this within Google Play Store itself. So it's kind of interesting seeing like the differences between um, Android TV slash versus Android for smartphones and like how, because Google has more of a tighter grip on Android TV, they're able to actually make this feature mandatory and available to all users versus where that's they can't do that on Android for smartphones. Yeah. And maybe it in through that it ends up getting used more than <laughs> than it is in other in other you know in other uh, presentations or on phones and, and whatnot. It'll certainly be way more useful for TVs, judging yeah. by what they said, you know. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. Uh how do they make how do they make that makes sense to you know the wide majority of users the people who aren't you know following this stuff closely that'll be interesting to see because uh, if it is up on a tv then every kind of user is being exposed to this feature which is kind of it's kind of a cerebral thing you know what i mean not everybody's going to automatically understand what it means to hibernate an app or you know you know what i mean um also they aren't going to understand that as much if they've never run into the you are out of storage space thing to begin with, you know, so that'll be interesting. Interesting to see. 